I'm going to show you how to do a simple dissection on a fish, in this case an Atlantic mackerel. And the aim of this dissection is to look within the body cavity of the mackerel to see if we can find a parasite, a parasitic worm that is commonly found in mackerel, Anasacus nematodes. These parasites infect mackerel very frequently, but also a number of other food fish species, so cod, herring, anchovies, for example. This parasite is potentially infectious to humans, and so that's why I'm wearing gloves and a lab coat. But the reason for looking for Anasakis in mackerel is in order to get an idea of the prevalence or the abundance, the frequency with which we find these parasites in the fish. If you're undertaking this dissection in order to collect data about the prevalence or intensity of Anasakis in a fish population, then it makes sense to collect some data about the fish that you're dissecting. So an obvious measurement to take is to measure the length of the fish, and we would normally do this from the tip of the mouth to the fork of the tail. So this fish is about 30.5 centimeters. You could also weigh the fish and record the weight of the fish. In order to open the fish up, you need some simple tools. I have here scissors, forceps, and a mounted needle. So taking scissors, insert the point of the scissors into the anal pore and begin snipping through the body wall along a line, midline, towards the head. Be careful not to insert the point of the scissors too deep into the fish because then you risk damaging some of the organs within the body cavity. Particularly, you don't want to damage the gut because if the gut contents leak out, that can make it very much more difficult to subsequently inspect the contents of the gut with the presence of worms. You'll get to a point near the gill arches of the fish, this region here, where cutting becomes more difficult, and so that's the place to stop. Using your hands, you can spread the incision that you've made apart, and the most prominent organs that you will find in fish, although this depends partly on the season when the fish have been caught, are the gonads. So here you see these milky white structures which are very prominent. Um, these are the male gonads of the fish and they're very fragile. They can easily be pulled out of the body cavity and set on one side. Immediately it's possible to tell that this is a female fish because these very prominent orange structures, that if you feel them, feel slightly granular, are the ovaries of the fish. But sometimes of year though, it's much more difficult to identify whether the gonads are ovaries or male gonads. So they're very prominent. Um, at least 10% of the weight of this fish, I would say, is in the um, two ovaries that I've now laid out beside the body of the fish. What's left in the gut cavity is the gut itself, still connected to the anal pore where I started the incision and running to the gullet of the fish. Associated with that is this structure here, which many students um, have confused for worms. This finger-like structure is the pyloric sphincter which is thought to be important for digestion of the, the fish diet. The other prominent organ that you find in the fish is the liver, seen here. This is the fish's liver. So now that I've removed the gonads from this male mackerel, and I've separated the gut from the anal region of the fish. I can move all of the main structures away from the body cavity and now I can begin to inspect the body cavity and the surface of the gut for Anasakis worms. Now these worms are um, often alive in a fish that has been relatively recently killed and um, that makes it easier to spot them. They can be a centimeter or so long. Uh, they're thread-like worms and the most likely place to find them is on the surface of the gut or on the surface of other um, organs in the body cavity. Also, 
on the inner surface of the body cavity itself. So I'm just going to spend a minute or two looking carefully around the inner parts of the body cavity of the fish looking for Anasakis worms. Typically when we dissect a number of fish we find that about half of them or maybe more than half of them are infected with Anasakis. But that obviously depends on a number of factors perhaps including the time of year, the region that the fish were caught and how the fish have been stored subsequent to being caught. We're dissecting this fish in May and um, I think that is a time when the fish are spawning so it's not surprising to find a very prominent ovary. It also looks as if this fish is quite heavily infected with Anasakis so immediately I can see worms associated with the surface of the gut. There is an Anasakis worm that I've possibly two actually that I've just pulled off the surface of the gut. I don't think it's alive, it's not moving, but I'm going to transfer it to a petri dish and go back to look for more. There's a worm that is extended and still alive. It's not moving very much, but you can see it I think curling and uncurling. So in its extended form that worm would be perhaps a centimeter and a half in length. There are many worms just at the surface of this gut cavity. There's another worm. Now you always find them tightly coiled up, but they sometimes uncoil when placed into water. More. The most worms I've ever taken from one fish are probably about 200. I've already found six in this fish. So it's very easy to find worms just at the surface, but ultimately we need to remove all of the gut contents to look more systematically for worms. So here I'm going to take the ovary and you can see I've broken the ovary there and you can see the eggs, the row, are being released. And the gonads are paired. So there's the second ovary also removed and I've laid them out now on the tray beside the incision that I've made in the fish and now those ovaries are so substantial that there's a lot more space in the gut cavity and we can hunt around a little bit more systematically for worms. Another one, big one. Another one. So this work, this fish is very heavily parasitized. So this worm here has been taken live from this fish and placed into a buffer, phosphate buffered saline, so an isotonic solution that will promote the survival of the worm. And you can see that the worm is quite active in that buffer.